buddy. It's running good. I'm sure I can find it. Hmm. Where are you? Come on. Show me you're there. Oh, I won't be shy because it's listed in private. And uh, let's go. Public. And then check. Let's see if it's there. No, it's not there. Should be coming up sometime. There it is. Good. Pal. Okay. Pop out the chat. Pop out the chat. Copy. And the setting up won't be take too long. Just put in the uh, chat into the box. I can't do it until it's public, so. Right. Chat looks live. Cool, that's good there. And now, let's make sure it's working. Looks like it's public. Cool. Well, good. And is it focused? Hopefully it is focused. Camera, it's focused. Okay. All right, so this isn't going to be an awful lot of me chatting. I'm probably, I mean, it's, it's just a simple miniature that we made. Well, I should I say I made, um, and I thought it was time to paint it. Working fine. We'll pull it out. All right, so that's uh, that's got it set. I think I'm ready to go. Hi, welcome to How to DnD. My name is Fred Wheeler, and today we're going to paint an orca jelly. Um, we actually made this orca jelly from a base, a large base, and I used uh, just basically wireframe paper clips, and then used. Uh, tin foil or aluminum foil or aluminium foil to build up the structure and uh, I created some some wire protrusions to sort of make it look like there was some funny things coming off it and we were copying an existing orca jelly miniature and so I've decided to spray it I've sprayed it gray I had some primer uh, and now I'm going to paint it and uh, basically what have I got here today I've got some brushes these ones I'm not going to need there's no real fine detailed brush work today. This is all pretty simple. So I'm going to get rid of these and I'm going to stick with just a all soft brushes. It's quite a wide one because I need to cover a wide area. I have a Citadel dry brush. This is a large size. You can get small and medium. And I've got a couple of fairly cheap brushes just for mixing paint together as I go. Um, and then I have uh, just a very cheap palette. And I've put a bit of cloth in here with some water on it, which is disappearing. And of course, is no longer wet. And this is to short, sort of keep my paint moist. Because uh, every time I'm doing this in hot weather, it sort of dries everything out and I can't use the paint. So my intention is just to paint this fairly simply. I'm not going to get too crazy. I've picked out four colors. I've got tan earth. I'm going to start with tan earth. I'm going to work my way to the flat flesh color and then I'm going to use the the deep yellow and I might be using a bit of white as I go just to lighten things up. So nothing terribly exciting or complicated. It all should be pretty simple. You're welcome to chat with me if you want. I can see what you're saying on my computer and uh, yeah, we're just going to get started. Um, also, to all of the materials and tools that I'm using are always in the description, so you can find those. Alright, so I'm going to start by putting it on this. 
Somebody said to me that this was a much smarter way to go. We'll see if it does work um, to keep my paint damp. I don't honestly know if it's going to work as well as I had hoped, but we'll see. Well, that's a fairly dry brush, and it's just it's just not covering. Uh, I could be here forever. I'd have to literally move to a black to make that work, so I feel like that isn't going to work. So I'm going to just dry that brush off. And we'll just try putting it on straight. Maybe give it a bit of a shake. I keep forgetting. I'm using these, um, is it Valigio? Valigio paints, which got a little squirty bottle, which is awesome compared to the Citadel where you pop the cap off and paint flies everywhere. So let's have a go at just putting it on straight. If it doesn't work, I'll go to the black. And we'll build up the color that way. Paint in a different location. Okay, well that's covering a lot better. Um, I do feel like, though, if you can see, I don't know if you can necessarily make it out, that I would have to put a lot of tan on there to get anywhere. Um, and I don't want to be using huge amounts of tan. So, as a result, I am actually going to have to use the black. I didn't think I was going to have to today, but... Should have just gone what I always know, which is start with black or start with white. And we'll start with the black. Okay, cool. And I need a I need a wider brush. I actually want to use this brush. So I will clean it out. My problem is that every time I clean out the brush and it's a wide brush to put the paint on. It's, it's wet and so it thins the paint out and the first coat really you're not supposed to thin out if you can help it. And this will be probably not um, dry enough. Yeah, it's still very damp. So what I'll do is I'll grab another brush. One of these. These here are, they say artist brushes, but um, there's only two Citadel brushes in there. The rest are fairly cheap. So. So if I can break, break that up a little bit. Get my little... Okay. All right, let's see if that works. Let's try again. Will it cover? Oh, that's better. Should have just started with the black. So all I'm doing is just trying to coat this fairly quickly. But I'm not watering it down because I want to get... Uh, I don't want to have to paint it like forever. Cover. Doo -doo 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 -doo. So for those people who are wondering, you know, why have I been doing sort of modeling and painting and so forth? Because it helps me relax. And I haven't been doing the instructional videos because I'll do them later. Because they are more work. And a bit more stressful too. So good for me to do this every once in a while and monsters aren't too difficult to paint because there's not a lot of complicated bits and pieces to them all right let's just get as much of the paint off as I can so I don't waste it And this is no fancy paint job. If you're thinking I was going to be doing some really clever stuff, nah, probably not. It's an orchid jelly, right? The yellow-ish. I'll put some highlights on it. I'll put some uh, varied colors in it so it's not completely just, you know, matte, matte yellow and nothing else. But I wasn't planning to do anything uh, super fantastic with it. Just, just the basics. Okay. And hopefully with the weather the way it is, being so hot, the paint will dry really fast and I'll have just enough time to get up, get the next layer of paint on. That's that's the that's the theory. Okay. Now, one of my 
having trouble picking this up. I know why I'm having trouble picking this up. It's because I don't have my paint holding um, containers with me, which I should have had. I, complete, I knew I'd forgotten something. Okay, all right, a little bit more. Okay, that's good enough. Let's run set out. I'm losing hair. You can see all the hairs come out. It's definitely a cheap brush, right? Because all the hairs are just falling out. Oh, I can't get it to stick it back, get back together so I'll just have to go to the side and dry that out a bit more. And I'm going to go grab my holding container because this is just going to be annoying. I'm going to get my fingers covered in paint. Might be a second. holding container this time so I can actually work on it without actually holding on to it. It's basically just a container but a blue tag and you just press this in place and work on it and uh, it shouldn't shift and I've got something nice and big to hang on to. There we go. <clears throat> Much better. That'll be a lot easier to work with. <clears throat> okay, let us move on to the tan. Hopefully the paint is mostly dry and I want to get the tan over black. I'm going to use this brush, hopefully it's dried out enough, just to see. And I'm going to um, just, I mean it doesn't really matter too much, I mean it is only an orchid jelly. So I don't need to actually um, cover it that well. There's going to be other colours going on. Well, that's not covering well at all. It's covering a bit. It's covering really badly. So let's try that again. Get that 
a shake. Okay, let's try putting that tan on. It's better. And I'm just going to put it on fairly rough. is so bad but it's always good to have a couple of brushes that are just really designed to just put the paint on and nothing else okay Tan, I think. So I'm building towards the color that I want. Letters, how's it going? to dry and I'll wash out my brushes while that dries and I think um, I think that's probably enough I should be able to go from I should be able to go from that to the next color I'm hoping so yeah I'm in New Zealand um, so um, let us if, if it's like 30 minutes past midnight um, and you'd probably find it's quite late where you are because you know it's like 6 20 p.m. in New Zealand so yeah it doesn't really marry up with a lot of other people um, are those Kikandus Kikandus I'm not sure what you mean by Kikandus actually you'll have to explain a little bit um, this is just I, uh, I made a homemade orca jelly and I'm, I've put black over it and I'll put some tan over it which I've done and I'm still deciding whether I should keep putting more tan on it. Make a decision Fred, make a decision, is it going to happen, is it not going to happen? Uh, decisions, decisions, no I'm gonna, I will apply a little bit more tan. black and I think that will be the end of the tan usage and let's get it's just the big areas I'm worried more about rather than anywhere else a little small areas I don't really care about
Yep. There we go. I think that was the right decision. I think putting another layer of um, grey on was a good idea. Oh. Yep, there we go. And there, and there, and there. I've seen your um your comment um letter, so I will respond. I'm just trying to get the paint on because it's it's so warm and so hot here that if I don't get the paint on quickly enough, it's just gonna dry and then I'll have to put more out and it'll dry on my brush as well, which is a mess. <laughs> okay. Well that's better. I think that's that coverage is a lot better than I was hoping for. Okay, so what's that? Um Oh, I meant the outside uh noises. Yes, cicadas, yes, they are. Yeah, I've got cicadas galore. That's why it's so loud. There's a bug called a cicada cicada that makes that sound here in the States. Yeah, it's cicada um, season and uh, they it's like a din. They never stop. I think cicadas are pretty much everywhere. I don't think um, there are no, in, indigenous to just one location. So I'm just going to let that dry a bit while I dry off my brush and I'm working myself towards using the flash color next because I feel like it's the next sort of uh, drop down. I'm working to, I'm trying to work towards the yellow. That's the plan and then I'm going to mix a little bit of white with the yellow to make a lighter color as I sort of work over this. So let's just see if I can't get that to dry out sufficiently. If I can't, then I will go to the dry brush. So we're going to give it a go and see what happens. If it doesn't work out, dry brush time. That's why I've been hanging on to this and waiting. Uh, okay. I will eventually be using that most of the time. All right, so first of all, shake the bottle, shake the bottle, shake the bottle. Uh, letters. Sup. Sounds about right. Laugh out loud. They love to sing loudly, often, everywhere. Yeah, they certainly do. You're going full yellow? No, I don't think I will. Um, I'm, I'm going to probably more like a, a mixture of tan, fleshy yellow, and a little bit of white. Um, so I suppose it might come out a brownie mustard mix. Um, I honestly don't know. Ugh, come on, shake. Right, there we go. This stuff, this flat flesh, I find does not cover well. It's uh, It always seems to need to be mixed with something else that's a bit thicker. And just the amount of layers that you need to use is just astronomical. But we'll, we'll see how we go. I've, I've, I've put some paint in there. And if it doesn't cover well, I know I need to stop. This is brush is still wet so I'm going to just ditch it and I'm going to go with this brush instead and see if I can get it to cover. Well it's covering a little bit. And I'm not really too interested about getting too fancy with it. I'm just trying to get a little a change in colour over it and that's it. And I know this is a dry brush, but I'm applying it pretty, pretty quick. Do 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 do. Letters. If you've got work or school tomorrow, don't don't don't, don't keep yourself up. That would be that would be that would be disastrous. But if you don't have work or school tomorrow, then by all means, hang around. 
had a few people jump into some of the live streams I've been doing and they're like, it's like one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning. Of course, I'm on the other side of the world and it's the middle of the day or just early evening and it's not an issue for me, but for them it would be. Uh, da -da -da -da. Oh, hang on, what's that? Um, letters. Uh, so here's a question. I had painted a lot of dogs and stupidly put them in one container that moved often, resulting in chips. What's your suggestion for stripping and repainting? Now I'm off till the 16th of January. Oh, so you got no, no commitments. Well, that's good. Um, stripping paint. I'd, I'd just go with your, your standard stuff, just go with alcohol, that usually takes it off. Methylated spirits, turpentine, those are usually the um, products that will take paint off. And if you, you're worried about sort of sitting there and uh, brushing it or um, rubbing it off, then don't, just leave it to sit in the in the the mix and it will come off on its own accord. You just got to be careful about what you use. Um, sometimes if the plastic is a, a particular type of plastic it can break the plastic down. But if you're not dealing with plastic then it's not going to be an issue. That's My mum is a art teacher and uh, that's what she taught me. So nothing particularly um, fantastic, it's pretty easy to work out. Okay, cool, all right. So I've, I've got my flesh on, and I'm not going to put it in the water, because if I do that, then holy Toledo, it's wet, and now I'm gonna have problems. So I'll put it off to the side. Your phone decided to autocorrect. Oh dear. Uh, <laughs> right, so we've done the flesh. I'm not gonna go more put more flesh over. I'm going to go for the yellow because the, the yellow actually covers quite a lot uh, thicker I've found. It's, you don't have to use quite as much of this stuff and this is the deep yellow. Okay so um, I feel like if I put it onto the, well, no this isn't, I haven't used this one yet. Okay so now I'm going to start dry brushing um, which means I've got to make sure that the dry brush has got, is dry. <laughs> oh, is that not completely obvious? Uh, <laughs> okay. And it doesn't matter that it's mixed with the tan because it's such a um, colour so close it's it's not too far in terms of it, they're pretty much the same. So let's put some of this paint on. And I now have to brush off a little bit, so I'm gonna just do it on this cloth here and see how we go. All right. I don't think that's actually dried sufficiently. I feel like it's still, yeah, it's still tacky. All right. Bear with me. I'm going to let it sort of set a little bit, and um, and hopefully I can get it to work and do what I want. Uh, hmm. There are standard D and D figures from the board game or other such things. So plastic. I tried purple purple power and green cleaner uh, as was suggested but they didn't really work um, I'll try the alcohol yeah Mike can I suggest though that when you try it out um, try it near the base of the miniature and try it on a miniature you don't care too much about so otherwise you're gonna wind up with really bad things happening to your miniature and um, I don't want to be responsible for for your miniatures melting they shouldn't but it's very tacky. See, this is this is why I need to have like um, a, a blow dryer so I can just blow dry. Otherwise, I start doing silly things like blowing on it. All right, move that out of the way just for a second. Yes, I know I'm being the blow dryer. Oh, 
All right, well, we're going to just wait for this to sort of dry up a little bit. It's still not dry, which is not, not helpful in the slightest. But what can you do? You've got to wait for paint to dry sometimes. It's not always going to work out the way you'd hoped. Uh, letters, what do you got here? Okay, base of mini and one that's expendable, exactly. Um, tacky paint is the most annoying thing. With well, The weather's really hot, so it tends to happen here. Uh, it was drying really fast, and then of course, if New Zealand is prone to really humid weather, um, which sounds weird, but it's true. It's prone to very, very humid weather, and so sometimes the drying time on things can get a bit longer than you want. Oh, I wish, wish I had a hair dryer. A hair dryer, a blow dryer right now would just be fantastic. Ooh, I wonder if I can get away with using somebody else's blow dryer. Would I get into trouble? Um, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go get a blow dryer. Give me just a minute, guys. I'm not gone, I will be back. Got the blow dryer. Yeah, I've just got to plug it in. Plug it in. Sorry about that. I just bumped into the uh, table. So now that I have a blow dryer, we'll solve the problem of the paint drying. Cool air, not hot air. There's a button for cool air. This is my partner's blow dryer. Oh, I hope she doesn't watch this video. Okay, all right. I was borrowing somebody's. I think I'm gonna, if I'm going to keep doing painting videos, I'm going to have to get a blow dryer. All right, so how does this work? Sorry about that, Leras. I didn't realise I'd uh, pronounce. Well, I'm terrible with names, so yeah. Sorry. Hang on. Something going on there. That is drying, but I feel like I'm going to have to do it a little bit longer.
Ha! It's, it's not perfectly dry. It still feels a little soft in places, the paint, but it's pretty good. Um, okay, so what have I uh, what have I missed out on so far? Um, yeah, no, I never thought of blow drying miniatures until actually I think my um, actually it was my mum who said you having trouble blow dry um, drying up miniatures and use a blow dryer on cool. Make sure you set it on cool and full power. Um, if you put it on hot, it probably won't dry very well. So yeah, run it on cool. Uh, there is, what do you got here? Nah, it's okay, I've heard there is, there is, there is, okay, all sorts of things. Okay. <laughs> um, is this a figure from a company or did you mold it yourself? Okay, so this miniature is based off a miniature that uh, WizKids made for the Pathfinder game and I have kind of roughly copied it um, it's a little bit bigger uh, this is the older brother and uh, yeah now I am trying to paint it so yes I did make it yeah it's not something you can buy but I do have a video on how to make it so if you want to check it out you can all right let's um, see if this is gonna work now the paint has got a little bit thicker so that'll probably help just to try here okay all right Okay, we, we don't mind having too much yellow on there. We actually, that's, that's fine because it's supposed to be yellow. So we can just start covering. Cool, that's working out all right. I'll probably have to do this a few times anyway. What I think I will do is because this paint is so thin, I'm going to just um, drop a little bit more into one of the other spot so as it uh, I'm finishing up one lot of paint I've got another one that's starting to set a bit it helps if the paint is slightly set I find particularly with dry brushing and this isn't exactly dry brushing I feel like I'm just blocking the paint on really it's uh, yeah. I'm just trying to get small amounts of the yellow on to start with most of the dark regions are staying dark though, so. The yellow tinge is beginning. And if I don't get too um, fancy about its coverage, then it means that I'm going to get uh, the effect of that grey and the tan coming through. And there'll be slightly different colours going on, so it won't be all just flat yellow. Which is kind of good. I think that's kind of cool. I like that idea. I don't know if you can necessarily see that, the yellow is definitely coming off. And just in small amounts, so it's just a slight sort of colour change. I can add more depending on how yellow I want it. And upside down. Round and round. I've um, I spray painted uh, the primer on for the spirit naga that I made, so that shouldn't be too far off. Getting a video for that at some point. We should be painting up the naga at some point because I actually finished making it. Ha! 
I bet there was a few people who thought I wouldn't be able to get it done, but I did. It did happen. And I feel like we're probably only maybe one more session away from completing the, the beholder. Okay. All right. Okay, so I think that's a good start. I'm going to use some more yellow and I'm going to just try to keep building it up because it feels like you can see brush marks in it. And that's sort of not what I was after. So we'll try that again. I feel like that's. I'm just going to um, go for certain areas that I want to put coverage on it. The more flat areas, I think, that's probably what I'm going to focus on, is just the big flatter areas. Can you see it? It, it, it all so, almost looks like it has its own rear hole. Yeah. Uh, what's that? Um, Mel, how's it going? I just got here. Did you buy this figure from a company or did you? No, no, I already, yeah, I molded it myself, made it myself. It's done. As I said, I've got some other videos on uh, making miniatures so you can see the, um, the video if you want to know how to make it yourself. Super simple, cheap as. And oh, it's just I don't know. I um I wasn't sure this would work, but I feel like it's actually coming off pretty well. And it, I mean, obviously, it's just dry brushed yellow with a bunch of other colours, but with all of the funny sort of um, dark recesses that have been created from the the hot glue that I covered over the structure, it looks really quite cool. Certainly it looks more entertaining and interesting than the one that I bought, apart from the fact that it doesn't have like little things inside it that looks, you know, like skeletal bodies. That would have been awesome if I could have done like skeletal bodies inside it. That would have been so fun. Okay, that is the yellow. And I think, I think actually I can probably start going just fractionally lighter. All right, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go fractionally lighter. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white, come up with another color, and then I'm going to just very lightly dry brush over that, and that ought to be enough, I think. So, kind of like a mustard color, I guess. Okay. Just a small amount of paint and the white, which mm, you gotta be careful where I put this, I add it or I don't add it. I'm always, always unsure. Um, let's just make sure that's clean. Yep, yeah, that's clean. We'll add it here. And I'll use a little brush and just mix it and see what happens. Okay. It's got a yellow tinge to it, but it's definitely a lighter color. And I think that is going to be our dry brush color. Okay. Piece of cake. And is it dry? Mostly dry, but I feel like that paint needs to dry just a fraction anyway, so I'm going to just grab this. 
hair dryer. And we're going to turn it on again. Alright, let's try. <clears throat> let's try this and see if this works. It's going to come down to just a smidgen of paint. Just to define, just pick up all of the, the lighter areas. Uh, okay, let's just try somewhere it doesn't matter, like on the sides maybe. that do anything at all? Hard to know. Let's try it again. All right, well that sort of, I think that worked. Um, okay, I might just add just a fraction more light color. I'm gonna just see if this, I can just, there's mostly white in this and not an awful lot of yellow, so. Um, what's this? Uh, Mel, I just made a gelatinous cube for an upcoming adventure. Wasn't gonna paint it because it's hollow and clear it and clear. It can hold two miniatures in it. Here it can cover two minutes minis anyway. You know, um, the I, I don't know if you'd seen a video by DM Scotty, um, the DM Craft, and he's got one on how to make a gelatinous cube and he did not paint his because you you don't really want it to be painted. You want to be able to see through and I think he used just hot glue to create some of the more interesting um, highlights, you know, to sort of give it sort of a bit of texture on the outside, but you can still see right through and see the miniature inside. So yeah, don't don't paint it. If you've used uh, something like a, a clear plastic, that'll work out pretty well. I was actually going to make a, um, a gelatinous cube myself at some point, but uh, I'm, I probably have to wait. If I know if I go and try and pick up the materials to do that, I'll get into trouble. So I have to wait until I'm back, back to, uh, back to normal. Okay, that is one gel orca jelly. My orca jelly is done. I don't think I need to do anything more to it. It's got a yellow tinge, so I started with black. Um, let's hang on, let's wash this out. Started with the black went to the tan earth, used the flat flesh, um, obviously used the yellow, and then I mix a little bit of white, and then brush over to give a few highlights. And it's done, one orca jelly. I'll bring it a little bit closer so you can have a decent look. It's worked out a lot better than I thought it would. So, 
hopefully this video will catch up with the fact that I'm holding it here and uh, you guys are able to see it. I don't necessarily know if I'm holding it in the right place, so I'll, I'll move it around a little bit so that you can see. I'll bring it down a little bit. There we go. So yeah, look, it worked out pretty well, I thought. I, um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that, and I would use it. Certainly would I have every intention of using this miniature. And uh, yes, trying to, to ooze somebody. Uh, look, I'm not going to take off straight away. Um, I'm probably going to hang around and chat while I sort of pack up my bits and pieces and clean up my brushes. But hey, look, I do videos all the time. So if you like this video or found it sort of useful, you know, share and like it. It's really, really good for me. Um, if you aren't subscribed, then subscribe would be a good idea. If you want to see more of this sort of stuff, I will do more of them. Um, I do lots of different things on my channel. Uh, if you uh, want to support me, watching my videos is one way, but also in the description there should be affiliate links so you can buy stuff online, pay exactly the same price as you would online, and I get a small commission. Um, you don't even have to buy the things that I've linked to. You just click on the link, go somewhere else, buy something else, and then, um, yeah, you pay exactly the same thing. And I get to buy materials and equipment and just keep the channel running. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's the gist of it. And like I said, I'll... I'm going to hang around and chat with you guys because I've got a couple of other little projects so I could probably show you while we're once we're finished here. I'll do my little sign out. Uh, if you weren't part of the live stream, then you can ask questions in the comments later on once it's published. And um, yeah, one orca jelly. So those of you who are still here, uh, stay around. Don't go nowhere. Um, and until next time, keep rolling those twenties. All right, the six of you who are in the room, I'm going to show you some of my other stuff uh, because I've got time to kill, and why not? Let us have a little bit of show and tell, shall we? Show and tell. So I'll I'll move those paints out of the way for now. So we've got a bit of space. It's always helpful, right? And make sure my brush is cleaned out. I better do that now since that's my really expensive dry brush. But um, I don't know if you can necessarily tell what this is. This is something I've been working on. This is my little beholder. Um, we've been I've done a few videos showing how to actually make this sort of thing. Uh, yes, behind the scenes. Um, this little critter is probably one of the cooler things I've made so far. Uh, I've made some fairly simple stuff, but this is definitely a lot more interesting. And it's it's only just started to harden up. Um, getting the little teeth in, the little toothpicks in there, it was really tricky. It was so hard. <laughs> anyway. So yes, little beholder that I have, have been making. And it's not finished. I'll, I'll keep uh, working on it. There's a little bit more to left to to go but the, the, the basic structure and most of the molding and um, and sculpting has been done so yeah and I thought that wasn't too bad I've also got uh, a mock-up for a, um, a hydra that I've been working on too and it's not far off it's coming around here we go I've got you so this, this fellow is all made out of plasticine. And it's basically my attempt to try to figure out if I can make a hydra without it looking goofy. Well, unfortunately, uh, I'm not successful at making a hydra not look goofy. It does look terribly goofy. It's made out of plasticine, so it's not solid. Um, it was supposed to be, because it's such a uh, complicated little piece, I thought what I would do is I'd do a test run before I did the real thing. Um, but my intention is to actually make this out of modeling uh, putty like this one so it dries hard and sets so it doesn't shift because right now this is flexible this would just move the only way to make it hard is to cool it uh, stick it in a fridge or something like that but uh, yeah so that's another one and if this brush will actually why is this brush not cleaning off properly because I left the paint on too long, that's right. <laughs> oh dear. Should have known better. 
Oh, what's the smell? I, I just missed that comment. Um, you anticipate uh, what your players using spells like Shatter. So you made two two jellies about half the size, and then four oozes to. Inst <laughs> so instead of them destroying it, they will simply break it apart. Actually, that's really 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 cool idea. I thought that's um, one of the things with making the the. the the oozes is I think you need to have more than one to really sort of have a decent amount of fun with them. And uh, I made like a grey ooze not lo long ago. Um, actually, that's probably not too far off. I can probably grab that as well. Just give me a sec. While we're um, doing the show and tell, I'll leave these here. And I'll go grab that grey ooze. It's literally like a uh, hop, skip and a jump in the other room. And I'll bring it back so you can have a look. So here they are. These are my little grey oozes. Really, really simple and easy to make. Uh, it's nothing to it. Literally, that's just a base, and I just filled it with a bit of putty because it had a big slot in it. And then I got a paper clip, bent it so it had a base, and once I'd sort of wiggled it around a little bit, I was copying off an existing um, grey ooze miniature that I saw, and then I just globbed hot glue over it and it, it naturally just formed a sort of an, an, a, the effect of actually being like a grey ooze so you wind up with these little things and uh, this is probably my favourite this was the one that it, uh, was my attempt to try to base it off the original miniature it came out it came out pretty well I thought it's um, and then I, of course I just painted it grey did a few highlights on it Nothing, no special paint job or anything like that. I made two, so now I have three grey oozes. And I'm actually tempted to make a few more of these because they're so easy and simple to make. And for some reason, my video, which I trimmed on YouTube for the grey ooze, came out a little bit um, lopsided and the sound doesn't sync up with the video, which just annoys me. Um, but uh, yeah, very, very simple. Cheap as chips to make. See, so easy. Anybody could do that. So yeah, that, that, that's pretty cool. Uh, I also made a an Ocular Swarm. Uh, that's from the Tomb of Beasts from Cabold Press. I, unfortunately, I had a little accident in the process of making that. So I broke it, so I haven't been able to finish painting it. Um, but I'll, I've got it, I'll show you in a second. Uh, Yeah, Liz. Yeah, Liz. I uh, the the beholder I think is going to be just rocking when it's finished, and I, I haven't finished all of it. And I obviously I don't want to have the wire frame. I'll have to do something about that. I'll have to um, cover it with something so it, it's easier to paint because metal doesn't paint very well. Uh, da, 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 da. I actually used uh, two, two, destroy brushes to dry brush. Yeah. Destroyed brushes are probably better for dry brushing than anything else. But um, sometimes I find that the, the brush is either too stiff or not stiff enough, you know, when you buy the, the cheaper ones. Um, so there we go, that's that. Trim that over there. Oh, the Oculus form, I'll show you, I'll show it to you. I didn't, it looks terrible, honestly. It looks awful because I couldn't. The paint wouldn't dry, the thing was starting to fall apart on me, um, and this is basically just a great huge mass of eyeballs that floats in the air. And It's not like a beholder, it's supposed to be like a swarm of eyeballs, and when somebody tries to um, attack it and they're unsuccessful, it sucks their eyeballs out of their head, and then they wind up uh, with no eyeballs in their head. And it, uh, can, Obviously you can't sneak up on this thing, because it always can see what's going on and yeah that's my ocular swarm that I made uh, which I will finish I just need to get around to finishing up it's the stalk I made the silly mistake of trying to pull it off here 
rather than at the base and there's a tiny hairline crack through the stalk which means that it's, tend, it's going to tend to sort of sway and break so I'm going to have to put something around it and sort of build it up so it doesn't um, break on me but yeah and it's, it's pretty cool I, I quite like it I, I, I'm glad I actually had a go at doing it it took me ages there were so many different stages to it but still not a very expensive thing to make you know all I did was uh, make a frame and then I put some tin foil or aluminum foil or aluminium foil in the middle of the frame which had like a little ball uh, coated that with uh, a bit of glue just to hold it in place and then once I've done that I took this thing and I coated it with some of that milli putt which is just a two-part um, putty covered that up came out pretty good uh, you have a video on that one or no I have a video on everything here there's a video on everything absolutely everything so yeah not a problem uh, you should be able to find that uh, I don't know whether it's I think it's under under Oculus Swarm Miniature uh, if you if you have a look it's got its own playlist if you look at my playlist you should be able to find it pretty easy but yeah I will finish this and I'm hoping it will look better than what it currently does because it's supposed to have like flesh in between the eyeballs and then each eyeball I will paint a different color or certainly I'll attempt to and that was the that was the intention it was to have a different color for each one I'll move these over so that they're not in each other's way um, so you can get a better look if I, if I move anything too far out of the way just let me know and I've got the spirit naga which uh, I just sprayed uh, just waiting for it to dry should be dry by now but um, I could probably go grab that as well before I finish up we're heading into an hour and I probably should get off and do other things rather than hanging around but it's been a fun day you know I've, I've done a whole bunch of videos on uh, one of character building with the D&D &D Beyond uh, website I did a video on uh, just doing this little critter putting the eyes finishing up the eyes doing the mouth putting the teeth in um, I haven't released that yet I'm supposed to go and tidy that up and release it I'll do that pretty shortly so you should be able to see the process for this and um, I also I've painted my orca jelly and so yeah I'll go grab my my spirit naga which is hopefully dry now and um, if you've got any questions just throw them out there while I'm still here uh. Um, look, I'm glad you liked um, popping in for the live stream. I, I think live stream on YouTube is actually a really sensible thing. You know, YouTube was supposed to be for like community and the average person, and not not for necessarily for um, high end production and you know people who were m making you know doing doing everything professionally. So. This is why I'm, I'm I'm trying to move my stuff towards live streams so that you guys can sort of see what I'm doing and chat along with me and you know you, you, you get an opportunity to interact rather than watch the video and then put a comment in and then wait for a response. You can do it right here, right now. Uh, what's that, Mel? Um, get that Beholder video up. I'm going to need it if I ever make that... Uh, that filter okay all right let me go get the spirit naga okay and I'll show you the the, the, the primed the primed finished version and um, then I, I suppose I better get to work and get the uh, the beholder video the first one because there's two parts the first one for the, the initial construction um, is already up you should be able to find that I don't think I did that I didn't do that very long ago so it should be easy to find I'll go get the spirit naga, it won't take me a sec.
I did try to run. So yeah, this is the Spirit Naga, which I will move into the center so you can see it better. So it's all primed and it's mostly dry. <laughs> and uh, it, it, was, uh, it was actually quite tricky, mostly because uh, getting the teeth, the fangs in was the hardest bit. And I don't know if you can tell, I don't know if you can necessarily make them out because it's not, it's not really easy to spot because it's all painted gray, but I'll move it a little bit closer. But those teeth or fangs are bits of wire. Uh, I didn't use toothpicks. I actually used bits of wire. I drilled a hole into the top of the jaw and then put the wire in and I had to hot glue the, the end of it. That was the, that was the hard. Trying to get the hot glue to not sort of um, block the hole was really, really tricky. Um, there's videos on how me making this as well so you can see the finished result. And it, hopefully I plan to um, get around to painting this, not, hopefully not too, not too far away. I should, should, be, should be sometime reasonably soon. I have been working on another project that I want to make at some point. Um, obviously I have to finish Mr. Beholder in terms of construction. And um, I will eventually get around to the Hydra, but I feel like the Hydra is going to be so many videos, it won't be, won't be funny. But yeah, I don't know if, hopefully it's showing up clearly for you. But I want to make a purple worm. And I want to make a really simple purple worm that takes up the space you want it to, but doesn't require like a huge amount of technical knowledge and time to make. So my plan with that, I'll put this back down. Sorry guys, I'm just uh, moving things around a little bit. And I'll shuffle the paints over so you can have a decent look what's going on here hopefully it's reasonably reasonably clear so my plan with the purple worm is I'm going to use a, a big base like a gargantuan um, base and I'm going to use like tin foil and just create like a sausage a long sausage turn it around I mean I just Bring it round into like a donut and once i've done that i'm going to glue it into place onto the base that's i think the basic construction for that it should work reasonably well and then once i've done that i'm going to uh, coat all of that with either hot glue if i want to be cheap and nasty which i'm quite happy to be cheap and nasty about or i'll use the millie putt which i feel like would use quite a lot so i'm i'm, I'm i am uh, thinking more in terms of i should go with the hot glue and then build up the structure of it around the tin foil that I've glued onto the base. And it, it'll just be as if it's coming up from underneath. Um, think like Star Wars and the Salak um, pit. And you'll just see like a great huge toothy more uh, on a base. And that'll be the extent of my purple worms. Rather than having the purple worm coming out of the ground and big twisty windy thing which would be really cool to do but would probably be very very expensive and I'm at this point I think I'm going to go with nice and simple and quick and we can always come back I can always go back and do something else with the the purple worm and make a, a bigger one I've seen some pretty impressive ones I think it's AJ Pickett did one that's really nice as well and um, who else was it um, DM Scotty on the DM craft he did one so yeah, these are my little monsters that I've created for uh, on my channel. And hopefully there'll be more in the future. More little critters and monsters. Probably not going to do humanoids, although I do have a, a video on how to make uh, humanoids out of paper clips, make a wire armature, and I use a bull clip for its base, and you just coat it with hot glue. It doesn't have any decent fine um, uh, features on it, but you could probably do exactly the same sort of thing and make something like a, uh, I don't know, a shape changer. Because a shape changer doesn't have that many features that you need to worry about. You just need to get the basic structure of it. Arms, legs, so forth. Things like that. And I think that would be quite cool. Um, I could do a video on making one of those sometime. They're really simple. I, d I did one, uh, I think I put it to music. I didn't think I had a, a live stream or anything like that. I just shot it 
uh, stripped it down so it was a little bit shorter and then uh, run it really fast and then put some music over the top of it and that was it. Uh, how many figures do I have at this point? Uh, are you talking about the ones that I've made or are you talking about uh, what I've collected? How many have I made? This is what I've made. Um, I haven't made any more. These are, this, is, this is so far, this is what I've made. Uh, in terms of how many miniatures I have that I've purchased, I have far too many. In total, I, I couldn't tell you. I have a wardrobe full of miniatures. Does that make sense? Like literally a wardrobe full of miniatures, just boxes and boxes. Far too many. Uh, <laughs> that, those are the ones that I haven't made that I just purchased. Yeah. All right, well, <clears throat> I think I better go because apparently Mal wants me to finish off that Behold the video and get it up so he can see it. And um, I, don't, I don't blame him. It's, uh, it's turned out much better than I thought it would. And it's not finished, obviously, but I, I don't think it'll be a, a mess up. I think it'll be reasonably successful. So look, I, I really hope you guys had a good time. Uh, hopefully showing you some of my stuff um, will inspire you. And, you know, it, by all means, chuck in some of your own stuff. If you know, if you've got a link to a picture of something you want to show me, I'm, I'm really happy for you to do that. I usually go through anything with a link will get held for review, but I'll still check all that stuff out to make sure uh, it's all cool. And, I, you know, I really want you to do that. Eventually, I'll get the Facebook group going, and then you guys can put photos up there. Oh, Wowza, yeah, that's a lot. Um, how did you come across that many and for what purpose? Uh, it's, a, it's an addiction. Um, miniatures is an addiction like many things. I used to play <sighs> Warhammer 40,000. And as a result, you know, really with that game, they just want you to buy vast quantities of miniatures and create vast armies, which I have sort of done. Uh... Unfortunately, it can be a problem too, which is why I kind of moved to Dungeons and Dragons. But it didn't stop the miniature thing. And of course, they started producing miniatures that were already pre-painted, so I've got a lot of pre-painted miniatures. I do have a lot of miniatures that need to be painted, but it's about, only about two boxes full. It's like two board games worth, so it's not as bad. But the wardrobe full of miniatures is full of... It's Dungeons and Dragons, there's Star Wars, there's a whole bunch. Uh, used to play Warhammer 40,000? Yeah, it does explain a lot. I mean, to be fair, when you think about the game and what you're dealing with, uh, when you go into the store, the first thing they're trying to do is convince you to start a new army if you've finished an army, and if you already have an army, they'll be pointing to you towards a new unit that will be more successful in combat when you're running the game. So yeah, it's a bit of a trap, unfortunately. It's not something that um, I, I think redeems the, the hobby. And and let's let's get real. I mean, I think there's a bit too much of a focus maybe on miniatures, even though my, my channel um, re does revolve around miniatures. You know, most of my instructional videos have a map and miniatures. Uh, and, and if you do a search for Dungeons & Dragons, D&D Miniatures is one of the most searched for... Uh, titles it's it's so common it's it's why people tend to do unboxing videos on D&D miniatures so yeah it's just one of those things I guess okay I think maybe it's time to call it quits um, and uh, yeah look hopefully you guys had a good time I'm going to be away on holiday. I'm going to Rotorua and I'm also going to Hi Waiheke Island. And so I probably won't be online for a couple of days. So there might be a few days where there aren't videos. And then when I get back, there'll probably be a great huge lot dumped all on online all at once. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So you'll, you'll get your videos. They might not necessarily all be released exactly when I intend them to because I won't be around. It's a, it's about a 
three and a half drive, three and a half hour drive to uh, Rotorua. So it's it's a long long way. Well, it is for New Zealand. I imagine if you're somewhere else like Australia or America, it's like nothing. And uh, yeah, you're welcome. I'm glad you had a good time, and I will have a good va vacation, um, vacation, vacation, holiday, trip away, gondola, gondola, and luge, luge. All right, that is me. I am going to.